Look at you. You're speffier than a petunia in a patch of chiggerweed. He is heading towards the tellers, so, and they, of course, have the money. You're listening to Comedy Parenting Radio. Hi, welcome to Comedy Parenting Radio. My name is Jerry Begley, and we're sitting up here in Studio B, Marble, Colorado. Beautiful day out here. And in the studio, I have Connie with me. Welcome, Connie. Hello. How are you? Oh, just fine. Thanks for coming all the way out here just to do our little interview about bank robbers and maybe some other stuff, too. So happy to be here. We'll be right back in just a moment. Treesock Press sells the books that stay on your shelves. When you want books that your guests pick up and read and can't put down, make sure it's one of Treesock Press's comedy books. Get a copy of our new book, Dad, the Tooth Fairy Income, and your kids will want you to read it over and over and over until you pull what little hair you have left out. When you pitch old books out into the gutter, you'll feel complete guilt if it's a Tree Sock Press book. Get your Tree Sock Press book wherever lousy comedy books are sold. Tree Sock. It stays on your shelf. Hold on, everybody. Here it comes. Okay, we're back with Comedy Parenting Radio. We got uh, Connie here in the studio, and she was telling me a little bit earlier about a, well, a, a time at a bank, maybe like a bank robbery or almost not. No. Yeah, Jerry, let me tell you, I work for a very large bank, and you know, really, I'm a country girl, so I love to be just in my jeans and cowboy boots. But you know, I go to work dressed up in my black suit and my high heels, and was in my office one day, and. This very odd gentleman walked in. Was, had a hoodie was he on. wearing a nice outfit? Uh, no, nah, not so much. Pretty grungy. Had a hoodie on with the hood up. So that right away in a bank makes all ears um, so come when, up. When, and, when you go into a bank, if the hood is up, then everybody's ears go up, your antennas go up, right? Right, okay. exactly. Because just a little, just a little, uh, just a little tip for you guys out there in Radio Land: don't walk in with your hood up. Okay? Yeah, please take it off. <laughs> but you know that would ten- generally tell us that somebody doesn't want to be recognized. So not only did this gentleman, young man, have his hood up, he had his hand in a bag of Doritos. Hmm. Wait, what? chips. Yeah, Dorito, Dorito chips. chips. Yeah, like so, how, how was oh, his hand? He was, it was all the way down in the bottom. He must have been going for crumbs. That's all I know. <laughs> so, hood up, hand in a bag. That makes your adrenaline just race to maximum <laughs> capacity through the roof. <laughs> yeah, and I am in my office. I actually jump up off of my chair and go out and I'm going to intercept this gentleman because at the bank, if you look someone in the eye and are kind to them and they're going to rob you, oh, it kind of messes up the plans. Or or offer them a fresh bag of Fritos. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah. Would you like some Pepsi (laughs) with your Doritos? Let me take that bag for you. (laughs) Exactly. Wow. So in a matter of, you know, three seconds, I'm going from the investment world which that in this day and age can make your adrenaline pump as well. That's yeah. a pretty big roller coaster. Yeah. But I go from the investment world to a hoodie and a bag of Doritos. So <laughs> I make eye contact with my teller manager and I am just ready to hit the button to get the police coming. And wait, you have, I mean, I've heard about this before. You have, you have secret buttons everywhere. Don't secret. In the bathroom, you have secret buttons in the trash can. If I told you, it'd have coffee to kill maker. You. If you hit the wrong coffee maker button, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're calling yeah. the police. You're surrounded, you know. Yeah. Hands up. <laughs> drop the coffee. <laughs> Not on your lap, please. No, so you're, you're, you're getting ready to call the police. The guy's got the bag yeah. there. And and where, where's he headed? Is he headed toward the vault? He is heading toward towards the tellers. Okay. So, and they, of course, have the money. Mm-hmm. Um, I am in my office, um, unprotected. Let's just state that. So it's a little nerve wracking for me. So all of this is happening, of course, in your mind in slow motion. So he walks up to the teller line. I see him withdrawing his hand out of the bag. We're going to be right back folks with more comedy parenting radio with Connie in the bank. 
This moment of uncontrollable laughter was made possible by a 32-year-old man with little to no coordination attempting to execute a simple cartwheel. His name is Sergeant Warner, but young James, our laughing friend here, simply calls him Dad. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Okay, we're back with Comedy Parenting Radio and... Connie, my, I've got goosebumps on the back of me because this guy's got his hoodie on. He's got the tur- the what the Dorito bag, Doritos. Dorito bag right. with his hand shoved down in the Dorito bag. Right. He's walking up to the teller, and you're ready to push the button and call the cops. Right. What happens? I am watching him. Almost seems to be in slow motion, pulling his hand out of the Dorito bag, and I am watching the teller manager. Her eyes are wide open, and. We are communicating without saying a word. So he pulls his hand out, and nothing but an orange hand with Dorito crumbs. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So both of us are like, you have got to be kidding. We are in an absolute state of adrenaline rush where the rest of the day is shot. You're you're ready to uh, block the doors and and the guy pull his hand out. (laughs) And he's got orange hands from eating Doritos, e- eating Doritos. He, he apparently got an urge to snack on the way to the bank. I don't know. I I haven't personally had that happen. Maybe other people have. I don't know. Hey, ladies and gentlemen out there, if you want to give your um, uh, banker a heart attack, just walk in with a hoodie up and orange Dorito, a, a bag of Doritos. Bag of Doritos. Uh, you'll give them a heart attack. On the other hand, you might end up face first on the floor with right. a, a Glock pointed at you for, by the cops. Absolutely. Just keep in mind, I am the farm girl, and I generally wrestle cattle or hogs before I come to work, so I would have no problem taking you down. You probably have a pitchfork behind your desk <laughs> yep, there. There you go. Okay, Comedy Parenting here, and uh, we are knocking it crazy with Connie in the studio. She was just telling us about a foiled bank robber. No, no, it wasn't foiled. Well, it was just the guy with the orange Dorito hands. Anyway, so you're a farm girl. I am. A country girl, huh? Absolutely love it. Wow. Tell me a little bit about country life. What's a little bit uh, unusual out there? I mean, Unusual? Well, first of all, it's the best place in the world to be. Um... I grew up on a bar- on a big farm, so as little as I Were can Were you born remember, in a barn? Uh, I got there as soon as I could. <laughs> do you have tractors and all I, that kind of stuff? We do, and might I say, I have a t-shirt that says, yes, I was raised in a barn, <laughs> and I wear it proudly. <laughs> and in fact, it, it's... It's one of those T-shirts that has stains and holes and everything on it, but you just cannot give it up because it's, it's so near and favorite. dear. You wear Absolutely. it every single day, just like people do tattoos. Yeah, right? yeah, well, so. <laughs> yeah close. Yeah. Yeah. You have animals on the farm? We do. Do you ever have... wrestle with animals or anything? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> if you only knew. We have pigs and we have beef cattle. And when my daughter was younger, she was in 4-H. And so if those of you know about 4-H, we raise the animals, and then we show them in various competitions. And when my daughter was very young, you can start 4-H at 10 years old, well, the animals were much bigger than she, but she was never fearful of the steers, the cattle especially. When we would start working with the steers to make them really tame, They were weighing about 600, 700 pounds, and my daughter was mm, 60 pounds, but she would just not be intimidated, just whip those boys into shape, and by the time we were ready to show them um, the following summer, they were weighing somewhere between 
1,300 and 1,350 pounds. So they're pretty big animals, but so she... you've got this little blonde-haired girl yeah. leading around this animal that weighs up to 1,300 yeah. pounds. Blonde-haired, blinged out, and she is styling. <laughs> we always wondered whether the judge was really looking at the animal or looking at the cute girl, but we'll leave that up to the judge, I guess. As long as you bring but home the ribbons, the, boy, the blue, I'll tell you. Well, we came home with a lot of blue ribbons, sometimes purple as well, so wow. we'll take it for what we can get. It. Purple but, ribbon, grand champion. You know, we had um, reserve champion one year, and we had champion another year olivia's last year in 4-h she had a shorthorn steer shorthorn steers contrary to popular belief do not have horns don't ask me anymore um but they are very furry so we had lots of fun <laughs> with their fur when you go to get an animal ready to go in the show ring gentlemen if you think women's makeup is expensive and they spend a lot of time getting ready. You should be so thankful because Are we talking you have cow no makeup? idea. Cow makeup. Cow and makeup. And you want to talk expensive? Oh my word! Estee Lauder cow makeup. <laughs> you know we're yeah, we are like the finest from Paris makeup here, and it takes about. I, I'm serious. Two I'm to sorry. Hours. I really never thought that you did makeup on cows. Oh, you. Can you, like what kind makeup. of stuff? Like Well, okay. You want to make the steer look as big as you possibly can. Right. Okay? Right. Yeah, yeah. So he has four legs, mm -hmm. hopefully, which mm -hmm. any we take to the competitions have four legs. And you want those legs to look like four posts coming off of the Ooh, animal. So he okay. is stout yeah. and sturdy. Right, right. So what you do is called posting the legs, which you use this very, very sticky hairspray in essence to pull all the hair out and up okay, so you're doing hairspray on this cow this steer to f fluff up his yeah. hair sort of fluff i mean and hair? we are talking we are talking hairspray on on steroids i mean it's the kind of stuff that basically hey, look you could go get some aquanet i mean I'm, I've, <laughs> yeah. seen some, no. I've seen some cow girls on aquanet <laughs> yeah. and they are posting their heads <laughs> <laughs> well yes big hair is also one of those things that go on with some women not yeah. really in the circles that we run okay, but i okay. have seen some big hair no, that big, is like big, oh big. girl you need to go look in the mirror because that is not attractive <laughs> anyway <laughs> so uh so you're fluffing up the hair anything yep. else um, well, if they're not quite, we usually show steers that are black in color just because we like that. And if they're not black enough, <clears throat> yeah, we might paint them blacker or we might use <laughs> hair dye, you know, it's all, you know, it's like the Miss America pageant. You Hollywood can't just has go, nothing over yeah. on 4-H, <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what. I am telling you what, <laughs> we run in the big circuit, but you know what, what we have always decided and you know. You run the big circuit, and there are a lot of people out there that do really, really shady things. Oh, man. Sh shady stuff. Shady stuff. Other so than putting black on a black cow. Anyway, we were talking a little bit about makeup for cows and then a little bit about hair. Yeah. You pay a lot of money for hair. Yeah. Now, my nephew, he is pe is becoming quite the hair cutter artist, so... Thankfully, oh, I can yeah. work a deal there. But when we go to big shows, there are people that come there just to cut hair. And they have a whole list of clients that they will um, serve that weekend. And they'll go home with a couple thousand dollars in their pocket just from mm. clipping steer hair. Mm. So if so uh, and you, you, and you children out there aren't quite sure what you want to do for a living, why don't you get down there to the cow hair cutting school, wherever that might be. and. Yeah. And uh, Connie will probably hire you because she's low on the list <laughs> once they get to those big shows. And and might I just remind you, now think about all of this that we have done. All of the time, three to four hours to get this makeup all put on the animals so they are looking their absolute best. So think about this, everybody. You know, cows will go to the bathroom whenever they want. So you have them all ready to go. And you're outside in what is called the makeup ring in the holding area before your class goes into show and your steer decides he has to go to the bathroom. Thank you. 
Connie, you are absolutely amazing. Thanks for coming out today for Comedy Parenting Radio. My pleasure. Uh, we'll definitely have you get back here again sometime. You are a lot of fun there. And uh, you can take that pitchfork with you yeah. when you leave, <laughs> Thank okay? Thank you, hey. All right. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. You are without doubt the worst pirate I've ever heard of. But you have heard of me. 